faith accomplishes remarkable things. Like the apostles, we too feel a weakness in our faith. Today we pray for the Lord's strength. Your gift of faith is anything but weak, and you will grant us strength to accomplish the impossible. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Increase my faith in you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, God's word that's before us this morning are the words of our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 17. Some very, very familiar words. Have you ever had one of those aha moments of your life? Or maybe you're watching a television program or you're reading a, a magazine article or a newspaper article and you get yourself a, a piece of information that just blows you away. Maybe it's something you've never heard before. It's something you definitely haven't realized. And maybe you even think to yourself, is this even true? How can this be? Maybe it's... Uh, uh, a piece of information like this, that, that uh, uh, did you know that uh, there's been more money spent on secret service work for this president alone than all of the previous presidents combined? I don't know if that blows you away. It certainly does me. I can't tell you for sure if that fact is true, but I've read it in more places than once haven't really read anything that denies those figures and that fact as well. It's something that amazes me. It sticks in my mind. It blows me away. And I can't help but think that that was how Jesus' disciples felt as he was speaking to them the words of this morning's text. When he was telling them things that cause people to stumble, things that cause uh, people to sin are bound to come. I mean, really, and that's a, that's a normal fact. You and I know that we live in a sinful world. We know that there's sin in this world. There's bad people. We know that the devil's working hard. There are things that have happened that show that these things happen, and they've happened recently, and they'll continue to happen. Those are bound to come. But then Jesus says, Woe to the one through whom they come. Woe to the people who cause people to fall into sin, who bring those things to people as well. And then he says, it would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to sin. So watch yourselves. Okay? Well, that hit the disciples. It was something that caught their attention. It was one of those wall moments, but Jesus didn't stop there. As long as he was hitting them over the head with a little bat, he kept giving them the tap. Then he said, if your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. This was something that these people had never heard in their day. They were told that it was okay to hold grudges, that it was okay to hate those who hated them, and even people who liked them, that they had a right to harbor hard feelings and to withhold forgiveness and to take revenge on people. And Jesus said, even if they do, if they sin against you seven times in a day, and they come back and say, I'm sorry, you must forgive them. Another well moment where the disciples are starting to think, how on earth can I do this? I mean, even I hear those words. You mean somebody bothers me, sins against me seven times in a day, and they come and say, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to forgive them? Yeah. There's a lot of mornings I get up on the wrong side of the bed, and I'm lucky if somebody can get by with one or two. This is a wow moment, and this is what causes the disciples to say to the Lord, increase our faith. We can't do this. This is what they were thinking. This is what we need to keep in mind, too, as we have the same prayer of those disciples. Increase our faith. How many times has this thought, this phrase, this prayer, this desire come to your mind during the course of your life? Lord, increase my faith. 
Lord, my faith needs to be stronger. How many times have you felt during the course of your life, or even through the course of the day, or even through the course of this morning, that your faith is small, weak, and insufficient? Increase our faith. And the Lord does that. He will. He tells us by reminding us, first of all, as He makes us forgiving, and as He teaches us humility. Increase our faith. Make us forgiving. Forgiveness is a, one of the most wonderful, blessed gifts that we receive from the Lord. Because you know what? God's law reminds us time and time again that we have sinned against Him. We know what His demands are, and His demands of perfection, and when we don't even come close to meeting them. And because of that, that we deserve hell. Think about the number of times that we sin against the Lord and His commandments every single day. And I can tell you, it's much more than seven times. What a wonderful truth it is that when we come to the Lord in repentance, when we say and have sorrow in our hearts and ask for forgiveness, that the Lord forgives us. Whether it's seven times, whether it's 70 times, whether it's 700 times, whether it's 70 million times. There is no limit on it. That Lord's forgiveness is full, it's complete, it's free. And it's something that we cherish very, very much. But, you know, one of the things that Jesus, I'm sure he had in mind here too, was when we pray in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And Jesus is talking about us forgiving those who sin against us. That when they come, because we have been freely forgiven by our Lord, that is something that we do as well. That we freely forgive too. Now, in case you're wondering, that does not mean that forgiveness means everything is always going to go on as normal. For example, I remember one man that I went to school with, and uh, he was married to a wonderful Christian woman. He was verbally and physically abusive, abused alcohol, would come home at night, beat his wife to within an inch of her life, would sober up in the morning and come and beg for her forgiveness. And she would forgive him. This went on for years for years. And finally, his wife said to him, I forgive you. This is it. And she left him. She divorced him. One of the things that my friend John screamed time and time and time again was, she's not forgiving me. She, in order to forgive me, she has to take me back. And I tell him, tell him John, that's not the case. She's forgiven you. She's forgiven you countless numbers of times. But you've broken her trust. She still forgives you, but she does not trust you anymore. 